basic lighting for photographers. So why do we control light? We control light to correct exposure, so our pictures are either not too light or not too dark. We control light to control contrast, so that we can control either softer or harder tones and colors. We control the quality and direction of light. And ultimately, the goal is to be aware of simple things we can do as photographers to use lighting to make more attractive pictures. So these three slides show you what we're talking about when we talk about controlling light in order to correct or control exposure. The picture on the left is obviously too light. And technically, we would call this picture overexposed. There's simply too much light in the picture. The picture on the right is exactly the opposite. It's too dark. And photographers would call this picture underexposed. And the picture in the middle is actually the correct exposure and really the simplest way to think about that is just to say the picture is just right. It's not too light and it's not too dark. Now contrast is a little bit different than exposure. Contrast is about the the the, the hardness or the or the the softness of the tones in the picture. So if you look at these three pictures together you'll see what I'm talking about. On the on the left side uh, we have a picture that is low in contrast. Photographers actually call this flat. And the flat image, you can see the colors, and especially if you compare the color of the red sweatshirt that, uh, that Edward's wearing underneath his jacket. The, the, red, the red sweatshirt is, uh, is a little bit softer in color, so it's a little, a little flatter in tone. Um, on the right side, we have the same picture, but this time it's been developed so that it appears to be high contrast. And high contrast results in more saturated color, uh, kind of harder tonality where the, where the shadows get darker and the highlights get brighter. And there's less middle, middle tones that, that kind of create a transition from light to dark. So contrast, contrasty picture, if it's not done correctly, can be very harsh. If it is done correctly, it simply just looks a little harder. It just the, the color looks more saturated and the detail in the picture looks harder. In the middle, we have something that, that most people or most photographers would consider would be a more normal contrast, where you have good color, but it's not oversaturated and it's not desaturated. It's just, it's, it's, very, uh, it, it's very representative of what the color actually looks like. And you have good detail in the highlights, good, good detail in the shadow tones, and everything just, once again, appears to be just right. So none of these pictures is right or wrong. They're simply different. Low contrast, normal contrast, and high contrast. Now we also want to control the quality and direction of light. Now there's a big difference between simply pointing a light at your subject or using the light as it exists without making any uh, corrections or, or, or modifications of that, that, of that light. There's a big difference between that and actually actively lighting uh, something in your photograph. And photographers learn how to actively light or how to actually uh, uh, change the quality and the direction of the light that they're working with, either artificial light or natural light. So in this particular case, we're starting with a, uh, a photograph that's made under direct sunlight with the light in front of the subject, which basically means the light is over the shoulder of the photographer. So the light is shining directly on the person's face. And in the list underneath of this, I've, I've I've put some green plus signs, some yellow plus and minus signs, and then some red minus signs. And that's to indicate the positive and the, and the not so positive aspects of each different type of lighting that we're going to show you today. So on the plus side, this is very strong contrasty light. It can be very dramatic. And the result of this can often be very bold and bright colors. And all of this combined can be flattering for some subjects. But for other subjects, perhaps it might be a little too harsh. And this is, this is hard to tell when this, is, this light is good and when it's bad. It's more about the subject itself, that whether the light is actually helping making it. If, if your goal is to make a flattering uh, photograph of somebody, you have to be careful with direct, hard sunlight like this. Now, on, the, on the, the negative side here, this direct sunlight can very easily start to wash out highlights or bright tones in the picture. 
It can also do the, ox the opposite. It can make very dark shadows. And washing out highlights and making dark shadows, right there, that is kind of a definition of a very contrasty picture. So remember we said that direct sunlight is contrasty light, and that's what we're really talking about. The highlights get very bright, the shadows get very dark, and there's very little uh, transitional tones in between. And maybe the simplest reason why you want to be careful with this is because when you stand somebody outside in bright sunlight and have the light shining into their face, they tend to squint. They tend to close their eyes up a little bit. And that's not always the most flattering um, uh, gesture that people can, uh, can, can give you when you're, when you're photographing them. Now, just to show you what we're talking about here, the, the picture that we just showed you is on the left, and uh, we've created a little diagram of the lighting and the camera position uh, and the subject position for each one of these different lighting schemes. So you can see that the camera is pointed at the person, the person's leaning against the wall, and to the left side of the camera, over the left shoulder of the photographer, there's the sun. And that's a fairly simple and fairly typical uh, way that, that uh, many photographers uh, use natural light. That's one way to use sunlight. Now, the next aspect of using direct sunlight, this time instead of having it, it over the shoulder of the photographer shining directly on the subject, in this particular case we moved the subject uh, so that the sunlight was shining on the side of the person's face. This is Edward, and you can see that the, the pattern of light uh, is different in this picture than in the picture of Jackie previously. All right, so once again, on the plus side, you've got strong, contrasty light. The light coming from the side actually creates more of a three-dimensional effect. So it creates highlights and shadows, which actually create texture and, and defined surface. And it really does create a sense of a three-dimensional effect here, which is why this picture may look a little bit different than the photograph of Jackie. And three-dimensional, once again, emphasizes texture. Highlight and shadow is where texture comes from. Now, that's all the plus side. On the minus side, uh, once again, because it's direct light, it does tend to wash out highlights, and it can make very dark shadows, contrasty light. Okay, And probably the most important part of this picture is that the pattern of shadows on Edward's face is not terribly flattering. The dark line underneath his eyes, the way the eyes really don't light up very brightly. I mean, when you're, when you're photographing people, the... Um, the eyes are the are the the key to the to the portrait, and you want the eyes to be bright and certainly in focus. And this kind of lighting tends to de-emphasize all of that and create this very awkward pattern of shadows uh, on the face. It, it, once again, for some people this can work, and for other people or other situations it may not be the correct or the or the best lighting pattern to use. And here's the diagram. So. What we did is we reversed the, the, the camera, so we went around so that the light is now no longer over the photographer's shoulder, but it's actually to the side of the subject and, to a certain extent, actually shining into the camera lens. And, uh, and this is where that strong side light comes from. So you can see we can't really move the sun. What we can do is we can move the subject and we can move the camera so that the relative position of all three changes. Now here's another way to use direct sunlight, and this is with, this, with the light behind the subject. And photographers call this lighting scheme backlight. Now on the plus side, this creates strong contrasty light. And you can see that this lights up Jackie's hair and puts a nice uh, highlight on her shoulders, which separates her from that dark surface behind her. And that separation from the background is another thing that actually makes this photograph more three-dimensional. But definitely on the minus side here, the face is in silhouette because the light isn't striking the face at all. This, the light is striking the back side of the, of the head and the back side of the body. Um, and because of that, it hides all the details of the face. You don't really know what this person looks like. It is not at all flattering. But believe it or not, working with direct sunlight in the backlight position like this is actually the key to making more professional quality photographs of people in direct sunlight. And the reason it is, is if we go into the next, um, the next slide, we'll show you. Before I do that, I want to show you the lighting diagram for the, for the backlight situation. And you can see, once again, that we've simply just reoriented everything so that the sun is directly behind the person and literally shining directly into the camera lens. All right, but with the sun in that position, with everything else remaining the same, we, we can actually come up with a much more professional-looking picture simply by adding one more component to the picture. And this is, this is where the, the sun is still behind the subject, but we're modifying the sunlight by using a reflector, which will allow you to bounce or reflect 
light into the dark side of the face. So we use the light behind the subject to light up the shoulders, to light up the hair, to create that separation from the background and the three-dimensional effect. And then we use some kind of a reflective surface to then bounce some of that light back into the shadow side of the face. And this is what the picture can look like. And if you look at this picture, you can almost see the pattern of light. We know where the sun is. It's behind the subject. But now we see that uh, from the picture standpoint on the right side, you see her face is a little bit brighter than the left side. And you see there's some direction to the light. That The reflector in this particular picture is on camera right. And it's bouncing light into that side of her face and making a very soft, bright highlight uh, on what was the dark side of her face. Um, so the goal of this is to create softer, more flattering light. The subject separates from the background. The contrast is a little bit lower. We don't have the really deep shadows and the really blown out highlights like we had in the previous picture. And this just looks more professional. And the reason it looks more professional is because professionals know how to do this. This is one of the tricks that we use to easily create flattering pictures of people, even under strong direct sunlight, which if used incorrectly, uh, can result in not so flattering pictures. Now this reflector that I talk about, in this particular case we used a photographer's reflector which is a, a specialized piece of equipment but it could very easily be a piece of whiteboard, cardboard, uh, foam core is something that photographers use a lot of stiff foam board. Um, I've even used newspaper in the past, aluminum foil, a white wall actually positioning your subject with the sun behind them and have them stand very close to a white wall. The white wall can also act as a reflector. The idea is to take that harsh sunlight and put it behind the subject and then use something soft and white in front of the subject to just redirect some of that light back onto their face. And this is what it looks like. The only downside to this is if you're using a reflector is often you need somebody to hold the reflector for you. So that, that would be kind of a, one of the minuses of this particular uh, type of uh, photography because you do need somebody to, to actually hold the reflector in the proper position. And there is the lighting diagram. You see it really didn't change from the previous shot. It's simply we just added that one more, that one additional component, which is the reflector uh, to one side. And there's the result. It looks like a number of different lights on this picture, but it's really only that one light behind the subject and then a reflector in front. And the picture on the left of Edward, you can see that the reflector is to the left side of the picture. And on the picture of Jackie to the right, you can see that the reflector is on the right side of the picture. You see the highlight and shadow side of the face. There's, there's depth, there's three-dimensional quality, there's, there's texture. Um, we're using a simple backlight and reflector scheme to actually make the shot look more professional. And uh, it actually looks like there's more than one light on these pictures. So let's move to a different lighting pattern now. This is also, we're, we're outside, but no longer under direct sunlight. We're actually working with indirect diffuse light. And diffuse light is soft, um, soft light, maybe cloudy or open shade. It doesn't really have a lot of direction. The light is just everywhere. It just appears to be coming from everywhere. It doesn't come from the side or from above. It's just everything is lit pretty evenly. Now the goal of this is, or the, the, the result of using uh, uh, indirect diffuse light is you get very easily, you get softer, more flattering light. You don't get hard shadows. You don't get washed out highlights. You just get a beautiful, soft, kind of glowing quality to the light. The contrast is easily controlled in this kind of light. You get good detail in the shadows. You get good detail in the highlights. You don't lose either end of the, of the tonality. The, the blacks aren't too black. The whites aren't too white. It's just Everything is just where you want it to be. This looks professional. Once again, this is an easy trick that professional photographers use all the time, is to find some indirect diffuse light to work in. Okay? And one of the downsides to this is because indirect diffuse light is not as bright as direct sunlight, this may require the use of a tripod or some kind of a camera support to keep the camera still long enough to make a, a sharp picture. So that's, uh, that is one downside that if the light isn't terribly bright, uh, you may need to, to, uh, to use a camera support. And here's a picture of Jackie in the same situation, just a little bit different uh, environment. Once again, softer, more flattering. The contrast is, is normal. It looks very professional. Plenty of detail in the picture in the darks and in the lights, but 
since there's not a lot of light, may require camera support. And here's the lighting diagram for indirect uh, cloudy flat light. Um, basically the light is coming from everywhere. In this particular case we put the the sun behind the cloud and the cloud and the sun near the camera position. So it just looks very flat. There's not a whole lot of direction to it and everything is lit evenly. Very simple. Once again, indirect cloudy, uh, indirect uh, diffuse light on a cloudy day or an open shade and this is this is the kind of result that you can expect. Okay, in these slides now we're going to take this a little bit deeper and instead of working with indirect diffuse light we're actually going to introduce a little bit of direction but still keeping the, the light diffuse and soft. So directional diffuse light is the, 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 one of the most beautiful uh, lighting patterns that, that photographers and portrait artists have used for centuries and centuries and, and the simplest way to, to reproduce this is window light. And when we talk about window light, we usually talk about north-facing windows or windows that, that don't have direct sunlight but actually have the, uh, the indirect light that kind of glows through a window. And you get this really beautiful soft light, but it does appear to have a direction. It comes from the side. So while the, the quality of the light is soft, the direction, is what, the direction of the light is what actually adds a little bit of depth and a little bit, of, um, a little bit more interesting pattern to the light. So in this photograph of Edward, the window light is coming from the right side of the frame and you can see that it, the, the light kind of scrapes, his cro scrapes across his face and makes a sense of highlight and shadow and, and, and surface to his face that actually looks very realistic and very natural. The light is still soft and still very flattering but it's getting a little bit more contrasty. This looks very professional. This is really how professionals start to finesse and, and add nuance to um, this very simple lighting pattern is simply by working with light that has a bit of a direction to it but still is very soft. And one of the wonderful things about this is once you have direction to the light, you can use reflectors to then lighten the shadow side of the face if you need to. So by where you put a reflector on the dark side of his face, you can actually raise the tone of those shadows. So in this particular case, we didn't use a reflector, but if we had, we could actually lighten the dark side of his face. And you have a lot of control over exactly how much contrast uh, you have on someone's face just by using a simple reflector. Once again, photographers use specialized reflective surfaces for this, but anybody can use any kind of a white or light colored, neutral colored surface like a piece of newspaper or a white foam core or even standing somebody close to a white wall acts as a, as a, as a beautiful soft reflector. Okay, and just like some of the downsides with the, uh, the earlier pictures, um, because of the lower level of light, you may require some kind of a camera support to make sure that your pictures are sharp. And if you do use a reflector, uh, often that re using a reflector requires bringing an assistant or, or a second person along to just uh, hold the reflector in the proper position. So this is Edward by window light. And here's Jackie by window light in a slightly different location, but the same effect. Once again, the direction of the light this time comes from the left. And you see that it's just a little bit more interesting and a little bit more three-dimensional than the flat direction or the uh, diffuse directionless light. And here's the pattern. So you see the window light and the wall and the camera position. And normally we're not moving our windows around. We have to actually move the subject and the camera around relatively, uh, relative to the window to be able to create these, uh, these different patterns of light. But it's very simple. Portrait photographers and portrait artists have done this for centuries. Now let's give you some more lighting tips and some examples of good ways to use light and maybe not so good ways to use light. Now generally speaking, soft, diffuse light results in more flattering pictures of people than does direct sunlight. That does not mean that you can't make a nice picture of someone in direct sunlight. You just have to be a little bit more careful and, uh, and uh, a little more controlled about how you do it. And we've shown you some ways to, uh, to control direct sunlight in the previous set of pictures. These photographs were all made in open shade and you have a beautiful tonality to the skin, soft, flattering light, and an attractive, simple background behind the picture. As a matter of fact, these are three individual pictures, but because the consistency of the lighting and the consistency of the, the, consistency of the background uh, is so uh, similar from picture to picture, just by putting these three pictures side by side, it looks like one large picture. It all just works. 
Now the opposite of that, and here's a group photograph shot in harsh, direct sunlight, and you can see what happens. When photographing groups, direct sunlight coming from the back or directly overhead results in contrasty, unattractive pictures. I would actually say when photographing anybody under direct sunlight without being careful about how you're using that direct sunlight, this is often the result. And this is not a particularly flattering picture of anybody in this picture. So if you take a group photograph or even a portrait like the previous pictures, the, the, the uh, flattering pictures of people, diffuse light, soft light is, is the key to more attractive pictures. Here's a smaller group under a, a more diffuse lighting situation, either a cloudy day or perhaps in the shadow of a building. And you see suddenly that you can, you can really get a better sense of what these people look like. They're more comfortable. They're not squinting. Um, they're probably not as hot. And the picture just looks better as a result of it. Now, if you look at the arrangement, and this gets actually more toward composition than lighting, but if you look at the arrangement of the people in this picture, you'll see they're all shoulder to shoulder in a straight line. And because of that, the photographer had to back up uh, to be able to include everybody in the picture. And the further back the camera gets, the smaller everybody's face becomes. Now, a simpler way or a better way of doing this would be to take the same group of people and come up with an arrangement like this. Now, here we are once again under more flattering light, but because we've been able to put the faces closer together in this picture by having two rows of people and having the, the folks in the back lined up in the space between the folks in the right, suddenly the photographer can get much closer and we get a better sense of what everybody looks like and uh, for the most part they're all smiling and they look reasonably happy. Now, inside strong backlight shooting toward a light source is difficult to control without using flash or reflectors. Now this tutorial is not about using flash, that's an entirely separate uh, subject in photography that requires a different set of skills. So we want to just work with what we call existing light or natural light indoors. Just the light that's there um, without adding more light. But you can see where outside we were able to work with that, that hard sunlight by, by how we position the camera and the subject relative to the sunlight and maybe even using a reflector. We were able to get that under control. It's a lot harder inside to do that when you shoot toward a light source in, as in these uh, two photographs. You'll also see, I believe these photographs were made with an iPhone or an iPad. And you can see that the, while the cameras in those devices are actually quite good, they're not terribly good when you're shooting into strong backlight like this. So if you do use an iPhone or an iPad, I'd be careful about shooting into a strong light source. You get this kind of flared, um, uh, kind of uh, um, soft, kind of strange effect to the picture. So when you're using window light, keep the window out of the picture. And instead of having the window in the picture, simply use the light from the window. And really what that comes down to is just find a better camera angle. So here is the same teacher in the same class in the same room, but the photographer just moved 45 degrees to one side. And now the light from the window is what's illuminating the scene, but the window doesn't appear in the picture. And you have a much, much better photograph. People love close-up engaging pictures like these and see how much more beautiful the lighting is without the window in the shot. So once again, we're using the light from the window without actually showing the window in the picture. This is a lower contrast. So you see there, the shadows aren't terribly dark, the highlights aren't terribly bright, and there's plenty of middle, middle tones in the picture, and that's why you see so much detail in the picture. And the final part of this is just getting close to the subject so you can really feel engaged with the subject of the picture. And look at how beautiful this photograph is. Finally, different camera angles of the same scene create different results. Be creative, experiment, and have fun. We hope this helps. Good luck. Have fun. Take pictures.